Ever wonder how your letter or package gets from one side of the country to the other, sometimes in just a day or two? You drop it into a mailbox and somehow, almost magically, it ends up in someone else's hands, hundreds or even thousands of miles away. Behind the scenes, there's a complex and surprisingly efficient system at work, the mail sorting process. Let's take a closer look at how the Postal Service sorts mail, from the moment it's dropped off to the final delivery, right here on History of Simple Things. It all begins when you mail something. Maybe you leave it in your mailbox, hand it over at a post office, or drop it into a blue collection box on the street. Postal workers collect mail from thousands of locations throughout the day. These collections are then taken to local post offices or directly to a sectional center facility, SCF, a type of regional processing hub. SCFs are where the real sorting magic begins. They handle the initial separation of local versus out-of-area mail and route everything accordingly. When the mail arrives at a processing center, the first thing that happens is culling, essentially separating the mail by type. Large envelopes, small letters, postcards, and packages all need to be handled differently. Next comes canceling, where a machine stamps each letter with an ink mark to cancel the postage stamp. This ensures that the stamp can't be reused. The cancellation mark usually includes the date and location the item was processed. At this point, letters are typically fed through high-speed sorting machines that can process up to 35,000 pieces of mail per hour. Yes, per hour. And it only gets more high-tech from here. Once the letter is canceled, it's scanned by an optical character recognition OCR system. These systems are impressively advanced. They can read the handwriting or printed address on an envelope and match it with the correct zip code and delivery route. If the address is written clearly, the OCR system will print a barcode on the envelope. This barcode contains all the routing information needed to get the letter where it needs to go. But what happens if the address is messy or incomplete? That's where the Remote Encoding Center, REC, steps in. Human workers, sometimes located states away, will view a digital image of the envelope and manually type in the correct address. This only takes a few seconds and helps keep things moving without delay. With the barcode in place, letters are now sorted by destination. The sorting machines use the barcode to send each piece of mail into a bin based on the SCF it needs to go to. Mail destined for your local area stays at the facility, while long-distance mail is prepared for transport. At this point, most of the sorting is handled by delivery bar code sorters, DBCS, machines that read the barcode and sort mail into hundreds of slots representing different zip codes and delivery areas. Once sorted by region, the mail is packed into trays or containers and sent out for transportation. Depending on the distance and urgency, it might travel by truck, plane, train, or a combination of all three. The United States Postal Service, USPS for example, contracts with commercial airlines and logistics companies to move mail quickly across the country. Packages that require faster delivery like Priority Mail or Express get loaded onto planes. Standard mail often travels by truck, especially if it's staying within the same state or region. When the mail reaches the destination SCF or regional facility, the whole sorting process starts again, but this time in reverse. The incoming mail is unloaded and fed back into sorting machines, which now organize it by carrier route. In other words, who will be delivering it? The machines sort the mail into the order the carrier will follow on their delivery route. That means when a mail carrier starts their day, their letters are already stacked in delivery sequence, from the first house to the last. At your local post office, the mail is sorted one final time. Letter carriers load it into their trucks or bags and head out to deliver it. 
Packages might be handled a bit differently, especially if they're larger, but the basic process is the same. Route, sort, deliver. And just like that, your mail makes it to your doorstep. Sending something overseas adds a few extra steps. International mail goes to an international service center, ISC, where customs forms and content declarations are checked. Packages are inspected, sorted by destination country, and sent via international air carriers. Once the package arrives in the destination country, it goes through customs again and enters that country's local postal system, where a process similar to what we've described begins all over again. Of course, it's not always perfect. Bad handwriting, smudged ink, and damaged packaging can cause delays. Weather events or mechanical breakdowns in sorting machines can slow things down too. Then there's the sheer volume, especially during the holiday season when the Postal Service handles hundreds of millions of extra items per day. But overall, the system is impressively resilient and built to adapt on the fly. Even with all the automation, people still play a crucial role in sorting and delivering mail. From the workers operating machinery and sorting facilities to the clerks at your local post office and the carrier delivering mail rain or shine, it's a coordinated effort involving thousands of people across the country. Postal workers memorize routes, manage delivery issues, and deal with everything from misaddressed mail to unexpected road closures. The human element is what keeps the system flexible and reliable, especially when things don't go exactly as planned. So next time you drop a letter into the mail, remember, it's about to embark on a high-speed, high-tech journey through an incredibly efficient logistics network. From barcodes and robots to airplanes and delivery trucks, the Postal Service is a marvel of modern engineering, and it's still evolving. Despite all the digital alternatives we have today, mail remains an essential part of our lives. And now you know exactly how it gets from point A to point B. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.